I am back. This is Brad Matheny again. This is the part two of understanding the gunslinger systems. We just finished going over the trending systems, which is what you're looking at. We have the Bollinger Band trending system. We have, let me get rid of these from our drawing, understanding pullbacks and such. You have the pressure system, which is, remember, this is the raw driver of pretty much all of these things. In some way, shape, or form, this pressure system is included in all of this data. Okay, so you have the Bollinger Band system, the pressure system, the wave indicator, and then the Donchian cycles indicator. Now, wh why are these here? These are trending systems. So I want you to understand that these are Essentially, these are trending systems, and these are what determine how we determine price trend. The idea is, is we are going to use these tools to determine price trend so that we can attempt to trade efficiently on any interval. Let me show you again. I'll come back down here to one hour. We're looking at daily right now. We come down to one hour, and here we go. We have the same data the same processes, I'll show you again. Here's our green Bollinger Band system. We're bullish on the pressure indicator. We're bullish on the, uh, the Donchian Cycles indicator. We move into bullish trending technically right here. Having three, one, two, three, or more. So if I wait a little bit to go right here, we end up with four, one, two, three, four trending systems. Very clean that we have a good solid move here. Uh, granted, we don't catch the bottom right away on this one hour chart. We probably would on a two minute chart or a three minute chart, but we're looking for two or three minimum trending systems to confirm. I'm trying to teach you the, the magic number is three. Uh, now, we take a look here at the, the FIB system, and we'll get rid of the Bollinger Band system. And look, guys, we are in the middle of the unique and ultimate 382 level. So guess what? We are bullish in a pullback until this area. This is considered a pullback, actually, from this area to this area. It's considered a pullback because... We have not cleared the ultimate 382 level. Once we clear the ultimate 382 level right here, this is now considered full on bullish trending. Up until actually, get rid of that, up until right here, where we get the unique 382 level rallies up and starts to cross this rotation. This is now moving us into weakening trend and potentially into a pullback mode. Pretty much, guys, everything from here to here is considered pullback mode. The markets could fall all the way down to 530 here on this hourly chart and still be in a pullback of a bullish trend because of the way this is set up. This is clearly bullish trending here. We're above the ultimate and unique 382 levels. We are clearly bullish. As soon as the ultimate, sorry, the unique 382 level moved higher, you can see it right here. Oh, don't want to draw these things. As soon as the unique 382 level moved up and we got below or into this unique 382 level, all of this became became essentially a uh, pullback. So let me show you again how pullback works. If we get between the unique 382 levels and the ultimate 382 levels in price, we are in a pullback. So anywhere in this area is a pullback of a bullish trend. Why? Because the unique 382 level is still down here. If we were below everything, we would be in a bearish trend down here. If we were above all of these, we would be in a bullish trend. So understand that what we're looking at now are the trending systems of an hourly chart. And drawing again everywhere. Oh, 
Okay. Now, now what we're going to do, folks, we'll go back to the daily and spread this out to where we started, which is right back over here. And we're going to now look at the cycle systems. Okay. So the cycle systems, bring to front, are very important. And what, the reason why the cycle systems are very important is you now understand trending, but you can also use these cycle highs here on the, on the pressure system. You can use these flash type trends or persistent type trends to actually trade. And you can use the cycle system here, the Donchian cycles, Oh, wrong one. Cycles. So I will get rid of the duplicate here. As a trading system. So here you can see that we are in bullish trending from this point on. I've already highlighted this, right? So we're in bullish trending from this point on. Up to bearish trending here in a pullback. Back to bullish trending here. Uh, and then back to bearish trending here into our pullback uh, into a moderate bearish trend here. I'll highlight this. Moving this out over here into deep bearish trending. And then we go back into bullish trending. Okay, so now look at these cycles. Nice solid pullback. Nice hook to the upside. Hey, look at that. Nice solid buy trigger right there. These are cycles. They'll come right there. There's our buy trigger. Uh, we'll come in here and duplicate. Come back over here. There's another hook. What do you know? Another buy trigger. Paste again. Come over here. Look, another hook. Let's see, right roughly there and then another hook right there and another hook right back over here now same thing to the downside so you get these pullbacks you potentially get these little hooks we didn't get a hook here uh, we, uh, we didn't really get a hook here. We got a rotation uh, back to the upside and then confirm. But you get these hooks that set up using the cycle indicator. And this is, so here's another hook basically here. And another hook right over here. So you're getting these system, these setups, very cleanly in trending. And that's what you're looking for with the cycle indicator. You're getting these setups again right here. This is what the hook looks like right there. Okay, I don't know if it, nope, so it. Plotted an arrow somewhere. I'll just do it again. Plot the arrow here. Plot the arrow here. These are what I call the hooks. And the hooks give you the opportunity <clears throat> to get into trending. And so we're going to do the same thing back over here. We're going to get a hook right here. And i got to move this one just a bit right to there and we'll get another hook right here and that pretty much gives us our opportunity now look at these hooks look at how these hooks played out okay so you get an opportunity to get long right here to catch this nice little move okay we're long 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 everything's good you get your hook you could have gotten in earlier you could have gotten in back over here that's fine start small build your position you get a hook, a re-entry trigger. So now you catch this move all the way up until it peaks. 
That's a $17 move on the SPY, lasting about seven, eight days. Uh, and now you catch this move here where everything turns green until we peek out with the cycle. Oops. Come back here. Draw this. Draw this. Make it blue. Make it two. And again, this is a... I can't see it. Don't move it. It's a $19 move. A 3.7% move before you get the rotation. Now look at this rotation, okay? Look at this rotation here. So we're green. We're in an uptrend. We roll. We start to get this weakening trend. Now look right here. Weakening trend. You can see it roll down here. You can see it roll down in the pressure. You can see actually the pressure indicator weakens right here, going to light blue. Move this out of the way. Right there, to light blue. So this gives you the idea here that we are now moving into weakening trend. So you get the idea here because the cycle systems roll. Now the cycle systems basically are price rolling into an uptrend and then into a downtrend and then into uptrend, into a downtrend, into an uptrend, into a downtrend, into an extended uptrend and now into a potential downtrend. So they are basically price rotation. The cycles become evident here on the Donchian cycle system, on the pressure cycle system, and in the exhaustion pressure system, which is the raw pressure. You can see the same thing here. Move up, move down, move up, move down, move up, move into extended downward trending, move into upward trending, and move into downward trending. Same thing here. Move up, move down, move up, move down. Move up, move down, move up, move down. So can you see these similarities in these movements? Now, this is daily. So this is, again, up, down, up, down, cycle trending. Can you see this? If you see this in combination with the general trending mechanism and the pullback side, now, guess what, guys? You guys have the ability to determine trend, you have the ability to determine entries. You have the ability to re-attack. That's what each one of these little triggers are. These are re-attack triggers to go long. And you can see they kind of line up with the initial trend. They line up beautifully with our re-attack mode. They line up beautifully with our, our cycle points. So they're lining up very cleanly, very efficiently. We use the pressure system, which is in everything. Remember, the pressure system is included in, oops, in every one of these indicators. So the pressure system here is the core element to what we're doing. The trend systems then help us define trending, and the cycle systems help us define where we want to enter or potentially enter the markets. So I'll give you an example of a pressure system where these little blocks, they represent this pressure mode designed to show you in trading blocks what's happening. We're in a pullback downward mode. We're in a weakening uh, rotational uptrend. We're long, 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 long. Weakening uptrend, long. Moderate pullback, back to long. Weakening trend, back into bearish trending. Weakening bearish trending in pink, bearish trending. Let me spread this out. Weakening tre bearish tre trending is pink. Moderate strong bearish trending is red. Bullish trending is green. Weakening bearish trending is cyan or light blue. And again, got the hiccups now. But the whole concept here is you can see the markets visually you can see this trend now the trending systems here like I said the wave count indicator let me show you something kind of fun with this okay so not only can you configure all of these um, but you can turn for example if this is a little cluttered you can come in here and you can turn off the standard high and low and the unique high and low levels uh, and what this, so oh, these are the dots, so we want those. Uh, and you can come in here and you can configure this 
So let's say I want this to be more reactive. What I do is I come in here and I change the inputs. So this is left side of pivot high or pivot low, right side of pivot high or pivot low. If I want it to be more reactive, I set it down to 3 and 1 and set the ATR balance down to 10. And I now end up with a very reactive um, pressure wave system. If I want to hypothetically adjust these, I can come in here, set the short-term RSI to 3, 6, 9. You see how I've done that? And now watch. I end up with very reactive triggers. Same thing here. 3, 6, 9. So here you go. Now I'll remove all the drawings so you guys can see. And now we're looking for trending. You see we get upward trending, upward trending, turn back on the Bollinger Band. So now we get upward trending right here very cleanly. Right there, right there. Boom. Solid upward trending. We're staying upward trending. Why? Bollinger Band went green. We're above these levels. So I'll highlight this, make this green. Very clean trending. We move all the way over to here. Where do we get into bearish trending? We're not in bearish trending yet. We're in moderate pull, uh, bearish trending on the pressure system. Uh, we finally get to our bearish system. One in still pullback mode. Two, three, so right th there. That becomes our short-term bearish trending. And then, of course, we go back into bullish trending. We've got one, two, and back above the ultimate 382 level. Right there. And again, this is daily. And we probably went into a little pullback mode right here. So let's look. We get bearish trending, bearish trending, bearish trending, bearish trending. So we have one, two, three bearish trending. We went into bearish trending here in a pullback mode. Went into bullish trending here and a pullback mode until we got to here. We went into solid bullish trending right here as soon as we got above the three ultimate 382 levels. Uh, and again, this is designed to show you how you use these tools to pick apart the charts. I mean, it's, I see it as simple. It may seem confusing to you, but, you know, all I'm doing is looking at trending. Are we bearish trending here? Yep. 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 Okay. One, two, three, four. Pretty simple. Until this changed, I only had three, so I could have technically maybe gone into bearish trending right back here. But I want some sort of moderate confirmation. And it gives us a perfect example of a downtrend. At this point, we can sell into this mode, $20, $21 downtrend, and then we can stay, you know, cautious. This is still bearish trending, but you can see the pressure system starts to move up. The Donchian system starts to move up. And we're off of our low. Look here. We're off of our low. We're starting to climb higher. Whenever you get into these modes where you start to change direction, like here, in this case we're bullish. So uh, right here, this mode, or this mode, this is an indication that you've hit a cycle high or a cycle low. And this is where you want to be cautious because now as we've rolled off this cycle low and we're moving higher, this means we're going to move up and we're going to set a cycle high. Cycles move in a sine wave type structure. So if you are going to try, if you're in a downtrend like right here, take a look at right here. We're at a downtrend, we're cycling up. Why in the world do I want to take a short right here when I know that the price cycle is going to go up? It's foolish. Why would you want to short with all this risk? Why not short right over here where risk is nominal and you're cycling downward? Same thing here. Why do I want to buy up here when the market is cycling downward? I don't want to buy right here. I don't. 
or right here. I want to buy down here where it's cycling upward. And again, same thing here. I don't want to buy over here where it's cycling down. I want to buy right over here where it's cycling up so I can get immediate profit in my trade. And that's what these are designed to show you. Trigger points. The cycles are trigger points. Same thing here. Trigger point, trigger point, trigger point. These are designed to show you where you want to try to buy or look for buys because these are ultimately ex expansion points. You can see right here. Expanded upward. Come right up here. Expanded upward. Come right over here. Expanded upward. Beautiful trigger points setting up for you to trade. All you have to do is be patient, learn to use them, and wait for it. It's really not that hard when you consider we're, we have trending, we have pressure, and we have cycles. That's it. And if you understand how to use the basic rules, you can understand how to trade very efficiently with these. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks a lot.